Feast your eyes on this 10-ton Toshiba. That's a huge bitch! This is a 2008 Toshiba Cosmio. Quas... Quasmio, Qu Quasimodo, uh, however you say it. It's a gaming laptop from 15 years ago that weighs more than the disappointment your parents carry around, has a grill that rivals the new BMWs, and speakers that will damage your eardrums like country music damages mine. Try that joke in a small town. This laptop was given to me by a good friend that bought it new in 2008, and boy was this thing a beast. I've only ever seen this model once in my career, and that was in 2013 when I had the unfortunate task of replacing the thermal paste which I recorded on my potato phone. And to this day, it's one of the most involved teardowns I've ever done. But I'm very thankful for that job because it helped mold me into the greatest technician that's ever lived. Anyways, my plan for this big red rocket is to slap in an SSD and install Windows 7 to see if the GPU is failing. If it's not, I'm gonna refurbish it and use it as a retro gaming rig. And if it is, I'm gonna put wheels on it and LS swap it so I can have a new weekend car. Have you ever seen one of these before? Let me know in the comments. What weighs 10 tons, needs two people to move, and takes three hours to tune up? This 14-year-old Toshiba Quasimodo gaming laptop. You've heard of a blue whale, well, meet the red whale. And today, I'm gonna dissect it and give it some long overdue maintenance. That means changing the thermal paste on the CPU and GPU, evicting some pubes, and giving this old whale a new chance at life. And will I regret making this video? Absolutely. Now, these old gaming laptops were harder to take apart than a modern German luxury car and require more paint than your pretend girlfriend listening to you talk about anime. And judging by these stains, it looks like this whale has seen some salt water in the past. But underneath those powdery traces of love is this BBCPU. A socketed Core 2 Duo P73 f whatever the fuck. It's old and slow, but is it upgradable? You're goddamn right. And paired to this is an NVIDIA 9700M GS with a whopping 512 megabytes of VRAM. These chips haven't been touched in 14 years, something you can relate to. So it's about time we change the thermal paste and those pads. And for the very first time in the life of the greatest technician that's ever lived. I'm gonna use these phase change thermal pads instead of paste. And why not throw in an extra fan while we're at it? Don't ask questions, this was an impulse mod. Now let's see those temps. Before, the CPU would get to 72 on idle. Now under stress, it does 65. The GPU spiked to 81 before the fans kicked on, but under stress, it stays at a cool 60. That means mission successful. Now, let's LS swap it. Let's throw it back to 2008 and see what this 10-ton Toshiba gaming laptop was really like back in the day. Now my first challenge is actually getting it up to my office. Boy, is that heavy. Sorry, neighbor. Now, this requires a ton of power, so it's always best to plug in the charger before powering it off. Perfect. Even this wallpaper gives big gamer vibes. Since I'm an old man, this is what I was playing in 2008. Counter-Strike 1.6. In fact, I used to be pretty good in my prime. Now I'm an old fu- My friend immediately compliments me on my game choice. But first things first, I have to put in my name. Yeah, baby. Let's pop some skulls. Get wrecked. And check out this volume knob. I wonder how loud this can actually get. The greatest technician that's ever lived. Wow, that's impressive. Anyways, here's the actual specs. But it's time to do some upgrades. Swap out that Core 2 Duo for an 11th Gen i7. And update that OS to Windows 11. Now let's see how it can run CS Source. Honestly, not too bad. But I know what you're all asking. Can it run Crisis? Well, I can assure you. <laughs> This PC is so big, you could drive it to work. So that's exactly what my friend Lupe did. This is a 2012 Cooler Master SE with a Turbo K20 swap sitting on RPF1s. Complete with a front-mounted intercooler and a bottle of... No. Stance Nation, baby. This giant piece of speed is in my shop today because it's getting a new GPU. And not just any GPU, but the greatest GPU that's ever lived. What's the retail on one of these? More than you can afford, pal. That's right, Lupe saved up years of his OnlyFans earnings to make this tank the fastest PC on the streets. So let's get to it. He's currently rocking an RTX 3080 with specs that would make any woman leave their husband. Which is exactly why he's my wife's boyfriend. After taking out the 3080, you can really see the size difference, and boy, do I feel inadequate. But enough talk, time for some action. Thankfully, Lupe's case is the size of a small country, so this 4090 has plenty of breathing room. And after we screw it in, I'm actually surprised there's no sagging. So props to Nvidia for that figure eight frame design. Now, time to plug in the connector that might burn my shop down and power it up. Shabash. To make sure it works properly, I have to perform my very complex, very technical, in-depth testing.
This customer wants me to install a 4090 to replace his 3080. What idiot would do such a thing? Me, I'm the customer, and this is my personal PC. So let's get started. Out comes my 3080. Thank you for your service. Unbox the 4090 and remove the protection so we can impregnate my PC with power. And it easily fits into my case. Perfect. It looks gr- oh, god damn it. Well, I'm not using that anyway. After connecting it directly to the local power plant, it's time to test. For the greatest technician that's ever lived. It's time to test again. We have power. How's the airflow? Yes. I bought the 4090 for 4K gaming, so let's take a relaxed drive in Forza to test it out. Smooth operator. And here's my specs for all my fellow nerds. And finally, for the real test. Now what are my plans with the 3080? Follow me and find out. It's been 12 years since this gaming PC's been cleaned. How bad is it? Not bad at all. <laughs> this 12 year old box of scrotum dust is getting its data transferred over to a new computer. But since I caught mesothelioma just looking at it, I need to take it outside and clean it before the greatest <laughs> technician that's <laughs> ever lived succumbs to black lung disease. Thankfully, this is dust of the ball variety, so it's light and comes right off. Not like the sticky swamp gooch dust I've dealt with on other PCs. Delicious. So first, let's take out this GPU from ancient Rome and give it a good blast of holy f That was a smoke grenade. Looks good though. Judging by these dandruff flakes, the CPU is suffering from severe dry scalp. Yep, this poor thing needs some cells and blue. And heat sinks aren't supposed to be this furry, so let's hit it with a quick blast to help speed up climate change and make sure to spread as much dead skin and pube flakes straight into the atmosphere. Wow, only your mother's gynecologist has seen gloves this dusty. Now that we've shed 10 pounds, it's time to transfer the data. And their new drive isn't big enough. Cool. This computer is running completely fine, and that's the problem. This fancy box of RG beauty is in my shop because the customer says it randomly powers off, something my brain can relate to. But no matter how hard I try, I can't get it to crash. The event log is empty, the RAM is solid and passes every test, the CPU isn't overheating, and it's mounted nice and tight. The f well, I guess that's supposed to come off. The GPU cables do look a little loose, and I don't think they're causing issues, but I'll go ahead and tighten them up anyways with my tiny raccoon-like fingers. Now, the only logical reason for this computer behaving is it must know it's in the presence of the greatest technician that's ever lived, and is on its best behavior. Or maybe the power supply is overheating because the AIO is mounted to the front and blowing hot air into the case. But these PSUs are built to withstand hot air, something I know about since I'm full of it. But since the the customer has a dust filter at home, there's no harm in flipping it over so it intakes cold air from the bottom, instead of fighting the GPU for clean air. Now the hardest repairs are the ones where you can't reproduce the problem the customer is having. And the hardest part about being a self-taught technician is that the instructor didn't know what the f*** he was doing. And it turns out this PC was actually crashing due to a faulty Thunderbolt docking station that was somehow shorting out the USB-C port in the back of the computer. You hate to see it. This repair nearly took my eye out. This 2015 MacBook Pro came in with a bulge bigger than David Bowie's and a bottom case being held on by hopes and dreams. These symptoms are a sure sign of spicy pillow syndrome, a problem that occurs on every device with a pouch battery. And why does it happen? Well, it's the same reason your room smells like it does, and that's excessive gas. Now, my customer never uses this unplugged, so instead of a replacement, they request me to just remove the battery and seal it back up. So that's what I'm gonna do. The tension on this bottom cover is no joke, so I'm gonna slap on my goggles and as soon as that screw is released... The cover pops up faster than you can lower your volume when I bass boost the greatest technician that's ever lived. Now my preferred method to extract these spicy meatballs is to unplug the trackpad before removing the speakers and dripping some KY isopropyl alcohol underneath the cells. This softens up the adhesive so that my pry tool can safely get underneath it and pop it right off. A little dance with some generous cursing and the battery is finally removed. Scrub off that old adhesive to give the sticky finger bandits a run for their money and clean up the crime scene with some more alcohol and a cotton swab before I seal it back up. Then it's time to safely dispose of the bag. This is you. This is the guy she told you not to worry about. This 50-ton gaming PC that costs more than my car came into my shop for some software troubleshooting, and boy, do I feel inadequate. I mean, just look at it. It has an Asus ROG Strix 4090, 64GB DDR5, a 13th Gen i9, an 8TB HDD with a 2TB SSD, a 1TB NVMe, and a naturally aspirated V10.
Uh, sorry, wrong video. For all you non-tech people, this is a Lamborghini on meth. And believe it or not, this is my first time seeing a 4090 in person. Until now, I've only ever seen it on the internet. Just like you and a real woman. As a repair shop, I never really see high-end desktops like this. It's mostly shitty pre-built with saggy GPUs that begin with the word I buy power. But sometimes I get treated to working on these majestic boxes of rainbows. And it's always a pleasure compared to the dust-filled shit boxes that normally occupy my shop. But jokes aside, it doesn't matter how expensive your stuff is because it's your stuff and you earned it. There will always be someone with a better computer or a better car, so just appreciate what you have. And never let that fire go out that motivates you to do better for yourself and those around you. But just remember, there can only be one greatest technician that's ever lived.